The growing technology which promises to be one of the largest computer applications ever to emerge. It's called GIS, or Geographic Information System. Morning rush hour, Denver. A U.S. Navy tractor trailer with six torpedoes aboard overturns at the intersection of two interstate highways, the most congested interchange in Colorado. Resulting roadblocks and fear of an explosion cause a traffic jam big enough to prevent 30% of Denver's workforce from getting to work that day. In the state of Illinois, a threatening outbreak of encephalitis sends public health officials scrambling to figure out where mosquitoes which carry the disease are coming from. In Canada, a major forest products company maintains crucial management information on 200 separate base maps using pencil checks and a calculator to track tree location on some two million acres. Then the government asks for a 25-year plan, along with yearly operational reports on protection and regeneration of the treasured forest. Each of these is a real-life problem, requiring analysis of multiple layers of geographic data. The kinds of information to be analyzed include geology, census data, land use, floodplains, vegetation, topography, soils, and hydrography. Analysis of such varied sources of data can take weeks, months, even years to collect, overlay, and analyze if done with maps and paper documents. But a growing technology which promises to be one of the largest computer applications ever to emerge is filling that gap. It's called GIS, or Geographic Information System, a database management system technology that integrates cartographic or spatial data with very large sets of related information. The list of applications for GIS technology is startling. Federal agencies, private companies, and universities use GIS for managing natural resources such as forests, waterways, oil, and electricity. State and local governments use GIS for land planning, tax mapping, routing resources such as police and fire services, or allocating students to schools. Market researchers use GIS for facility siting and address matching to target potential markets. There are over 1,000 GIS applications being used at the present time. In the first application here, the Colorado Department of Local Affairs wanted to combine road maps with census data to determine what alternate and less populated routes were available for the movement of hazardous road materials. In Illinois, scientists needed to generate area coverages of encephalitis outbreaks by zip codes matched to known locations of standing water in abandoned tires. The forestry company had to develop an outline of how it would harvest resources as well as plan for road construction, wildlife habitat management, and seedling planting. All three groups turned to the leader in GIS technology, ARCINFO, created by ESRI in Redlands, California. ARCINFO was the first GIS to employ the ARC node topological data structure with a fully relational database. What ARCINFO does is integrate concepts of database management, computer graphics, and spatial modeling into a software system for managing geographic features. Sounds simple? Well, it is. It enables the user to work interactively with, analyze, manipulate, and apply spatial data in computer graphic form called coverages. The coverage stores and displays cartographic data in the form of points, lines, and polygons. Points can represent anything from oil wells to crime incidents. Lines can represent streets and roads, utility networks, delivery routes, or waterways. And polygons represent areas as varied as counties, national forests, land parcels, or floodplains. Related to any point, line, or polygon feature are attributes in a relational database manager. Attribute information is thematic or reference data and can be anything from soil types to land use, from population density to water quality measurements, or from parcel numbers to address ranges. This simple structure of map coverages related to data files offers great capabilities for the entry, manipulation,
query and display of large sets of spatial data. While the structure is simple, its power is exponential. ArcInfo has a map librarian capability that can work with very large sets of continuous spatial data. ArcInfo's multidimensional capabilities can access and integrate data for analysis between and among the multiple layers of information in a study area. And the topological relationship maintained by ArcInfo between features allows complex analytical operations to be performed on the database. How does it all work? Well, first of all, ArcInfo is software driven, not hardware driven. It can run on PCs, workstations, minis, or mainframe computer systems. It's used by small organizations and large corporations. Information for the database can be entered in several ways. Cartographic input can be digitized, scanned, or entered by keyboard. This is particularly useful for working with coordinate geometry or COGO functions to create maps from survey descriptions. Commercially available databases including U.S. Census Bureau DIME files, USGS DLG data, and others can be directly transferred into ArcInfo. These and nearly two dozen others can provide instant databases in applications requiring census or demographic information, land survey and natural resource data, or street centerline files with address ranges and other attributes. All map features, regardless of input method, have associated attribute tables in the info or other relational database management systems. Once the database is created, it can be queried and analyzed. Special ArcInfo tools allow for very detailed analysis. For example, ArcInfo can buffer the area at least 150 feet on either side of a stream and can produce a graphic output of the zone. This is a great tool for locating a factory or similar facility in relation to a feature or set of features. The overlay function will combine areas of information. A soils coverage could be combined with a land parcels coverage to produce a new coverage which shows the soil values on the land parcels. This type of analysis could be carried out to many levels of detail. For example, increased flight operations at a regional airport call for noise abatement procedures. In-depth analysis of the problem might include such layers as a buffered area around the airport to indicate various noise levels, as well as residential versus non-residential zones, landmark features such as schools, churches, or oil tanks, water locations such as lakes or rivers, power line networks, and electrical towers. All these coverage layers of the study area could be combined and analyzed to determine new departure procedures for the safest and quietest routing. What starts as a complex, multi-layered problem becomes a simple analytical operation with the power of ArcInfo. AMLs, or ARC Macro Language, allows for programming of specific computer processing functions within ArcInfo. Writing AMLs can considerably reduce data manipulation time. The philosophy behind ArcInfo is to create a package of tools which allows any user to design an individual system around specific needs. In Colorado, officials used ArcInfo to prove that the problems caused by the accident could have been avoided if the truck driver had followed an alternate, less populated route. They are now using the same database for other kinds of municipal and county applications in zoning, demographic studies, land use planning, facility siting, and tax assessment. In Illinois, tire recapping businesses were tracked using the electronic yellow pages from R.R. Donnelly directories. This system revealed 85 businesses. Scientists were able to address match the business locations to address ranges in dime files. Mosquitoes were found in many of the locations, and control measures are underway. The forest company can now track the amount of harvestable trees and their location, all in about an hour's worth of processing time. The output is a report and graphic outlining the areas where the trees are located. All users learn how to use ArcInfo through a tremendous network of product and user support. ESRI takes great pains to make sure that an ArcInfo package is going to meet a user's needs. 
Relationships don't end with the sale of the product. That's where they begin. Optional services are designed to meet a variety of needs, such as a phone-in system to answer questions or help troubleshoot problems, an electronic mail system which allows users to communicate with each other and share information, training classes which cover general and special topics such as database design, videotaped instruction, newsletters, and an annual conference where users from local and state governments, federal agencies, universities, and business meet to learn the latest in ARCINFO applications and design. Just ask the City of Birmingham, the City of Albuquerque, National Geographic, United Parcel Service, the LA Times, Rand McNally, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Southern California Edison, and the City of Seattle. These are among thousands of organizations who are working with ARCINFO every day. From high-level cartography to land use management, from tax mapping to ecological research, from sales territories to emergency vehicle dispatch, when you have ARC Info, you have the world.